What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteX.com. We're continuing the perfect workout series here today, this time by popular demand with a total body workout. Now look, guys, it's hard to declare perfection in a single workout when we're trying to hit our entire body, but I'm gonna try to do my best and I'm gonna justify why we're selecting the exercises that we do. In addition though, there's a little bit of a bonus. I'm actually gonna make this the perfect total body workouts, as in plural, because I'm gonna give you more than one. To accomplish this goal of trying to give you guys a template that you can use, I want to make sure that I'm doing that. Now, again, we're talking about two singular workouts. We actually have a complete plan called our Total Beast Program at AthleticX.com where we have a complete workout day by day for 90 days, which is all based around total body training that I suggest you definitely check out. Now, when we're talking about this, guys, and always in our total body workouts, I always break out the muscle markers. As you can see, though, it's not going to be very practical for me to draw all over my damn body to get the point across. I'm going to apply, though, something else that's going to be very helpful for you guys. And that is, instead of just thinking about which particular exercises are going to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, I always want you guys to think more in terms of movements. Because right, if we know if we can train the movements in a particular workout, then we can incorporate the muscles that achieve those movements. So for here in these workouts, you're going to find something in common. We want to train the squat pattern. We want to train the lunge pattern. We want to train the hinge, particularly a hip-driven movement, a push, a pull, some sort of a carry, and of course here always a corrective exercise. So with that being said, guys, I want to break down workout A. If you're going to do this, like let's say you did the perfect chest workout, you just want to try it out, this is the workout that I would give you. If instead you want to break this down into a more appropriate plan where you're going to do a Monday, Wednesday, Friday total body plan, then you would use A and then I'm going to give you workout B and you go back to A. So you'd be alternating A, B, A, B, A, B on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Some weeks it's A, B, A, other weeks it's B, A, B. The fact is, guys, I want to point out again, as always, why we're selecting what we're selecting so you understand why and you can gain some real benefit from it. So you ready? Let's start breaking down workout A. All right, so let's start breaking down our first workout here, workout A, and again, give you the reasons why we're selecting what we're selecting. And it starts here with our warm-up, and our warm-up here is going to be that lunge pattern, that overlooked athletic, irreplaceable movement pattern that I think a lot of us sometimes overlook. And we use it here as a warm-up because it does a couple things really effectively. Number one, it gets us to move in multiple directions, as you're going to see here with our multi-directional lunge, and it helps us to mobilize our hips in all three planes of movement, at the same time increasing our core temperature to make us feel more warm and ready to actually participate in this complete total body workout. You can see that Antonio Brown, when we trained together, actually used this as a primary movement for all of his warm-up. His entire dynamic warm-up consists of different variations of the lunge. It's that effective for getting him ready to do what he has to do, and I believe it's gonna do the same thing for you. So what we do is two to three rounds of seven each direction of this multi-directional lunge. Two forward in the sagittal plane, two in the frontal plane side to side, and then two going back to the right and the left in this transverse plane opening up the hips. Again, you're gonna feel your hips start to mobilize and feel loose and ready to go. Two rounds might cut it for you, maybe you need an additional third, that's up to you. Now we move on to our key foundational lower body movement pattern. This is going to be our strengthening pattern. This is our squat, and we're going to use the barbell squat to do this. And the key here again is to make sure we're kind of accommodating for some of this extra movement pattern focus of what we're doing in this total body workout. So instead of going five sets of five here traditionally, we're going to drop it down to three sets of five. Again, to allow for some of the additional movement patterns that we're going to attack here in this overall workout. The goal is still the same, however. When you can perform all three sets of five repetitions using a particular weight, you want to increase that weight over time and continue to try to progressively overload and get yourself stronger in this base foundational movement. From here now, we have to work the other side of it, right? The other side of the chain, which is the posterior chain. And for me, we're looking and focusing on the hinge. But rather than go to a deadlift in this particular workout here, you will if you're going to stick around for workout B, here we want to focus on just working on that hinge. And more importantly, working on developing that overlooked aspect of glute participation in a hinge. People just don't get this right and we suffer from what we call glute amnesia, never driving from the right appropriate muscles to drive a hinge. This exercise is one of the most overlooked when it comes to that, and it's the barbell hip thrust. This exercise gives us a hinge. You can literally see that it's driven solely by a hinge, but whether or not you're doing it correctly is the thing. I don't want you to load up super heavy here. I don't want you trying to get in the five rep range, because what we tend to do here is just heave our hips up with no real concentration and effort or focus on driving that with the right muscles. We want to drive this with the glutes always. So we're going to drop the weight down into the 10 to 12 rep range, add an additional set for three to four sets of this to try to really focus on driving this key movement and doing it the right way. 
Now we move on to the upper body. And again, we want to get that foundational lift for pushing. And for me, it's going to be the barbell bench press. Now, if you don't feel adequately loose at this point from the other work that you've already done, you can certainly warm up with a couple additional sets here of the bench press. But let's say you're ready to go. You're once again going to attack this with three sets of five where you're trying to progressively overload from workout to workout, getting yourself to become stronger in this movement. Now we got to go and we got to hit the pull aspect of it though. And for me, I'm going to go with the weighted chin up. And my loading parameter here is going to be slightly different as well. Again, I don't go all the way down to the three to five rep range because I find that people really cheat those reps and they don't initiate with the muscles they need to. So what I want you to do is lighten it a bit into the six to 10 range. I'll give you a little bit wider range from which I want you to fail in. Fail meaning not being able to get yourself back up to the bar without looking really ugly or doing some kipping. So the weighted chin is just one of those irreplaceable great exercises that I think we all could benefit from including. So you're going to do it here as well. Finally, we're going to now incorporate the last two components here, which is the carry and the corrective. And these are two things I think that get overlooked. And again, we are accruing additional volume. This is not junk volume. This is not throwaway. So we need to make sure that we've accommodated this by making some changes earlier in the workout. For the carry, you're going to take half of your body weight in each hand, and you're going to just walk around whatever space you have, 50 steps. And I mentioned 50 steps as opposed to a distance because even if you have a limited amount of space, you're going to be able to count your steps. And the goal here is to actually do a couple things. Number one, there is a conditioning effect from doing a carry, but more importantly, you're building grip sustainability. Not just overall force output, but sustainability of force output, which is a critical component that benefits all of our bigger lifts very well. I actually just did a video on this and how important it is, and just talked about this in my live event, how important grip sustainability is to your overall athleticism and performance. So we're going to use the carry to accomplish this. And then finally, we move on to the corrective. Now guys, you know that I'm a big fan of the corrective exercises because I feel like they're helpful for preventing some things from going wrong even before they do. Or if you already have had some injuries, they're helpful for getting us back on track. And for me, I guess you could probably figure out that the one I was going to select, if you could only do one, would be the face pull. So here we're going to end this with two sets of 12 of a face pull. And again, it's that mentality of how you're approaching this. Think of it more like 12 sets of one. Right? And then you do that again. So you're doing 24 high quality, perfect repetitions in this perfect workout to make sure you're recruiting the right muscles that are going to not just help you posturally, but are going to help you again back in those overall lifts and feel just overall better. All right, so there's workout A. And like I said in the beginning, if you want to just try what the perfect workout would feel like, and you're actually maybe even new to total body training, then workout A is where you focus your efforts. And you would get some great benefits from doing it. However, if you want to be more expansive about it, and you want to start to actually lay out a program, then what I would suggest is that you move on to a second workout. You give yourself an alternative that's going to fill in the gaps nicely alongside workout A, and that's where workout B comes in. How do we perform it? Workout B is going to give you the same opportunities for warming up. I feel like that 3D lunge pattern is so beneficial that's going to warm us up for what we have ahead in this workout as well. We're going to perform that in the very same way, and then we move on to our first big exercise. And here, the hinge becomes more of the focus. The hinge becomes the overload, and the hinge in this case becomes the deadlift. We're going to have the opportunity to, again, once again, perform this in a three sets of five fashion so that we can overload, still accommodate some of the additional volume here, and also take into consideration the fact that neurologically the deadlift is going to be a little bit more taxing on the body than some of the other exercise options within this total body framework. So we're going to do a three by five there, again, with the goal being the same to progressively overload each time you encounter this workout B variation. From here now, to finish up the lower body training, though, we go back and we have an option here. You can either squat again in this workout, or you can do something different. You can do the reverse barbell lunge. Now, if you're going to squat, I want to see you lighten the load here. This is not going to fall into the same framework of the three sets of five. Here I'm trying to deload you a little bit, realizing once again how taxing the deadlift itself can be. But if we do have an opportunity here and you want to try something different, I would highly suggest that you try to do the reverse barbell lunge. This is going to give you a chance to do something different to load yourself in an exercise you probably haven't loaded yourself fairly heavy in. And we're still in this 10 rep range. That's a fairly heavy load. But whichever choice you make, realize that the main focus, lower body wise, was to deliver most of your efforts into that hinge, in this case, the deadlift, for those three sets of five. But now we go back up to the upper body. And the upper body here is not necessarily the bench press, but still a press. And it's going to be the overhead press. And once again, this is our foundational pushing pattern here, this time in the vertical as opposed to the horizontal, but still with the same goal being to progressively overload and build your strength in this movement over time. 
realizing that yes, it can be challenging to continue to press overhead more and more and more weight. The fact is we still want to apply the same principle of wanting to overload here and strengthening in this exercise. So we do our three sets of five on the overhead press. We now go back to the pull and here we're going to do the row. And contrary to what some might say in terms of the loading pattern for the row, I still like to keep this a little bit on the higher side, 10 to 12 reps. Why? The same idea and concept applied to the barbell hip thrust would be applying here as well. I think that just heaving the weight up and down is going to make us susceptible to a couple things. Number one, there might be some lower back fatigue having done the deadlifts earlier in this session that could come into play and rear their ugly head if you're just heaving the, with the weight around at a lower rep focus. So the 10 to 12 is going to allow me to be a little bit more conscientious about the weight that I'm lifting and the way I'm lifting the weight. And more importantly, I also find that getting back engagement and lat engagement is a little bit easier when you lighten the weight and focus on how you're lifting the weight. So the barbell row is slightly adjusted to be a little bit more accommodating to that, to allow us to get better form, better contraction, and again, without overloading the low back. And again, we wrap up the workout one more time with our carry and our corrective. This time, instead of carrying down on our sides, we're going to lift those arms up overhead. A much different experience and a much lighter experience if you haven't already tried this. Here we're actually going to go for a quarter of your body weight in each hand and try to once again accomplish those same 50 steps around the gym or around your apartment or whatever workout facility you're training in. The fact is, you're going to feel a lot of postural engagement, you're going to feel a lot of challenges to keeping your arms as upright and straight as possible, you're going to feel that mid and lower trap area really work overtime to try to keep you in this position. All good indicators that this is something you should probably be doing a lot more of. And then finally, from a corrective standpoint, hey, if you want a face pull again, you'd be making me happy. But there are some other options, particularly in the lower body. You can utilize this hip band mini ladder that you're seeing here, or you can utilize some other things like band pull-aparts, or even just basic external rotation for your rotator cuff. So there you have it, guys, the perfect total body workout. Again, covering workout A and B, and depending upon what your individual training goals are right now, whether you just want to experiment with one or whether you want to try to incorporate it more into a plan, they're both going to benefit you substantially. The fact is, guys, if you're looking for a complete program, however, as I said, there are limitations when you're coming up with a perfect workout, a singular workout, especially when it comes to total body. We designed an entire plan, which is our Total Beast program, available over at athletics.com. I mentioned before, it's not just a couple workouts, it's a 90-day plan, step-by-step, -step, incorporating many more correctives that are here, athletic training and conditioning drills as well, making you exactly that, a total beast, not just a one-dimensional strength athlete, but somebody that can do a lot more than that. It's all laid out for you step-by-step -step at athletics.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. I know if you like the perfect series, guys, you've been asking for more, make sure you leave your comments below and check out the other ones in this series. And to do that, you're going to want to make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications so you never miss a new video when we put one out. Guys, I listen to what it is that you want, and I do my best to cover those in all the videos that we do. I hope you're finding them helpful. I'll be back here again in a couple days. See you.